Hey everybody, today on Rod Run Sue, we're taking a look at Dinosaur World. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to Dinosaur World, folks, which bears a passing resemblance to uh, Jurassic Park, but that's a total coincidence, I am sure. Even if we are on a uh, jungle island raising up cloned dinosaurs to put on a really great show for tourists who have a tendency maybe not to make it to the end of the tour. Now I'm going to show you how this works today in a solo run through, which is interesting because originally the game did not have solo rules. But if you go on Board Game Geek, there are some files you can print out and download to get an official solo variant. And that is what I'm going to be showing you all today. Which means instead of trying to beat Jen over six rounds of park development and maintenance and cover-ups, I am going to be spending six rounds trying to complete all of these objectives. Now, as part of setup, there's actually a bunch more objectives. You're supposed to draw eight, and then of those eight, you can get rid of three. I've already done that. So my objectives are, I've got to get a lot. I've got to get five uh, large carnivores in the park. And if I do it before round three, I'll get five bonus points. So I could get 11 points for this instead of just um, six. But if I don't complete this by the end of the game, I lose 10. And at the end of the game, I'm just trying to score as many points as I can and then checking against a uh, scoreboard. So anyway, I've got all these objectives that kind of form my overall goal. When you're playing a multiplayer game, there are three public objectives and players are racing to be the first to complete them. And they're the same types of objectives we're seeing here. Um, I got to get all these large carnivores, which is going to be dangerous, but that's okay because I've got an objective to get my security up to level 15, which is a really huge investment too. Because I've got that objective, as part of setup, I got to pick one um, income icon, and I chose this one that every round will be giving me automatically increases to my security. So that's going to help me achieve that goal right there. Uh, what else is going on as part of setup? I was able to pick one special ability building in one dinosaur paddock, and the ones I grabbed for myself down here are a uh, Spinosaurus paddock, which is a large carnivore, so I'm going to try and get it filled up with four, and then I'll only need one more large carnivore. And you know what? Um, the, over right next door to it is the Raptor Culinary Experience, which is where I can have a Velociraptor. That would be one small carnivore, and that's not bad because if we look at my objectives, this one here says I've got to have at least one and le at least one small carnivore. So between um, my two starting times, Tiles, I'll be only one large carnivore away from being able to complete both of these objectives if I get them filled up over the course of the game. I'm also trying to get my jeeple track up higher, uh, get a really high level excitement by the end of a round, and nine excitement's not going to be too hard if I've got this many carnivores lying around. So I've got my objectives, which again, there'd be three of them in a multiplayer game. I'd be racing to complete them, but in the uh, solo game, I've got more to complete. I lose points if I don't do them, and I've got till the end of the game. Although if I do them sooner, I can uh, get bonus points. Wish me luck. Let's go. How's the game work? Well, this handy dandy little player aid works equally well for the solo and the multiplayer game. The first thing we are going to do every round is hire workers, then do public actions with those workers, then do private actions with those workers if we haven't used them all up on the public actions. Then we're going to give a tour of the park where hopefully we'll still have some workers left over so that they can help out and um, activate all kinds of abilities. And then at the end of a Around, we'll do some income and clean up, you know, make uh, money based on how happy the tourists were and stuff like that. Maybe lose a few people if security isn't high enough. And by lose, yes, I mean they will die. Um, but uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Okay, so first of all, hiring workers, what you do is you draw from this deck of cards a number of workers, equal number of players plus one. So since I'm playing a, t a solo game, I'm going to draw two of these. I am going to pick one of these, and this is going to be the nine workers I have available to me in the first round. Now, if I were playing a two-player game with Jen, I would have drawn three. As the first player, I'd pick one, Jen would get the other, and then the uh, third one wouldn't get chosen. Now, they always have four general purpose workers. Workers. What's really important is the different combination of special workers. So I've got two security experts versus three over here. Uh, either way, I've got tour guides and I've got um, administrators. But then, really, it's a question of do I want two security and a scientist or do I want three security? 
Normally, honestly, normally I'd take the two security and the scientist, but because I've got this huge security goal, I think I'm going to go for this one instead. So, okay, those are the workers' uh, pool I'm going to have. One, two, three security fellas, one administrator, one tour operator, and one, two, three, four generic workers. Now, like I said, if I were playing at a higher player count game, it'd be, Jen would choose next. She would have two to choose from. She would pick some, and we'd be done with that portion. So I have hired my workers, and these are use it or lose it. If I don't use them by the end of the round, I'll lose them. But I want to use them to best ability over the public, private, and then tour sections of the turn. So now we're going to the public actions. And it's at this point that I can use these workers on public actions like gathering DNA for dinosaurs. Oh, and that reminds me, I need to um, add dinosaurs to the world. And or I'm sorry, dinosaurs, uh, dinosaur DNA. We've got this big old bag of DNA dice here. And now if I were playing a two player game, I would roll the number of players plus two dice. But in the solo game, it's a little bit different because I am going to draw a card that, well, could have been an objective for me, but instead lists out some specific elements that are gonna play out over the course of this round. First of all, this is the unique thing in the solo game. There's really two unique things in the solo game. There's more objectives I've got to do, and my dinosaurs can literally break out of their paddocks and run rampant all around the park. And this is the interesting thing. You kind of wonder, why isn't that in the multiplayer game? Because that's like the really fun part of Jurassic Park, right? Well, you can only do that in the solo game. So the first thing I have to check in the solo game is, uh, are there any that are on the loose? If so, they would move in this direction. Uh, then, are there any that need to break out? Now, it doesn't matter. I don't have any in a paddock, so none can break out anyway. So we pretty much ignore this. But once I've started to clone some dinos, this could cause me problems in the future. Now, this says I'm going to draw four dice and roll them. Which again is the same number of dice I would roll, I would uh, get available to me in a two player game. All right. Although in a two player game, we would be vying for the drafting because now begins the public actions. And those actions again are gather DNA, grab these dice to get more DNA so that I can develop dinosaurs and uh, may have a successful park. That's one of the public options. Another one is develop more dinosaur paddocks so I could be growing different types of dinosaurs um, all over the place. Now, I don't think I need to chase after that. Because of my objectives, I just want large carnivores and one small carnivore. I can get the small carnivore here at my Velociraptor um, restaurant. And, I'm, and if there was another large one, I might want to grab that so I could just be done, but there aren't. So I don't think I'm going to be grabbing any more dinosaur paddocks. But there are also these special buildings over here, and I could have my workers develop the special buildings also. And then finally, the fourth action I could do, and by the way, they are all listed here handily dandily. These are all the four public objectives I could be doing right now, is build an attraction. And I should say, the um, board for the attractions is very large, takes up a lot of table space. So I have left it aside and just put the four types of attractions here, but they should be a whole nother board taking up space on the table to, to um, have the restaurants, the security office, the roller coaster, and the merch shop. Anyway, they're just right there available for me to build. So I could build them, I could build these, I could build these, or I could grab dino DNA. And honestly, I, you know, I'm not going to get very far without some dinosaurs. Now, I started with some DNA, two of the three basics, and one of the advanced. Now, if I look a little bit more closely at what I need to clone the Spinosaur, um, the carniv carnivorous killing machine that I'm trying to make for myself, I need um, one red, one blue regular DNA. And then I need the uh, cayenne and the orange advanced DNA. Plus, the first one of these Spinosaurs needs a second blue DNA. The uh, second one of them needs all four of those, and one advanced purple DNA, and then uh, and so on. So if I want to get all these done, I need to have a steady influx of this stuff, plus more and more of these, so I can get more of these dinosaurs into my park. Um, and so, maybe the first thing I should do is draft a DNA die or two so that they will give me more of what I need. So let's do it. Let's have my first action be to gather DNA. And as it says right here, I can spend one, two, or three of my workers 
that I just hired to basically grab a single payout from one of these dice, a double payout, or a triple payout. Now also, if I had a scientist, and I was using a scientist meeple to draft these dice, I'd get one bonus DNA. Now I chose not to take any science meeples, instead I got extra security experts. So anyway, I could send one, two, or three workers over here. I think I'm just going to spend three of these generic ones uh, who have no special abilities. The security experts, they, they help me develop my security, which is something I'm going to do. The administration, they help me make more money and do various things. Uh, these help me uh, run my tours better. These guys, they don't have any kind of bonus. So I'm just going to use three of them to grab one of these dice and triple the outcome. And I guarantee you folks, if I was playing a multiplayer game and these rolled up, whoever was first would totally grab this one because it says, hey, get two of any type of the standard DNA. And because I am sending three workers out there, each of them could grab me two standard DNA. So that means with my three workers off of this die, I can get any six of the standard DNA that I want, any of these three. So that's what I'm doing. Three workers gets me six standard DNA. And how am I gonna spend all that? Well, it has to do with my Spinosaurus. Now I know my Spinosaurus needs a lot of red and blue. Ultimately, uh, to get all four of these, I'm gonna need four red, four blue, Another blue there, another red there. So I'm going to need a lot of red and blue ultimately to get them all. So how about, because I can get six of any of these, how about I go one, two, three, four, and what the heck, five, six. So now I've got five each of those. Um, and that should be enough, right? Yeah, because I need exactly five red, I need exactly five blue. Now I don't necessarily have everything else to be able to do all four steps of this, but we'll worry about that in a bit. So that was my first public action. And if I were playing a multiplayer game, it would now be your turn to use your workers to do one of these four actions. Grab one of the remaining dice I didn't grab, be the first to build a building, etc. But since I'm solo, I can just keep doing public actions until I'm done. I don't have to worry about anybody else grabbing stuff uh, that I might have wanted to have grabbed. Now, um, what am I going to do next? I could go and get some more DNA, but I think I've got enough. So the next thing I've got to ask myself is, am I going to grab any of these buildings? Because they don't stick around. At the end of a round, as part of the cleanup phase, most of these buildings are going to disappear. And in fact, in um, a multiplayer game, there is a fixed number that will disappear. But in the solo game, this tells me how many. That three of these and all three of these are going to go. So if I want to get them, I mean, this is the only one. The um, Triceratops Ring Toss, which, by the way, is an herbivore. I don't need any herbivore, so because I don't have any herbivore objecti uh, objectives, so I don't even care about that one. So if I want to get any of these other buildings, I better snag them now because they will be gone at the end of the round. And again, that will happen in a multiplayer game too. That players are trying to grab them, and if they don't grab them, they're just going to be gone at the end of the round anyway. And so of all these buildings, I'm kind of eyeballing the goat pen. It's going to cost me four bucks. Oh, I should say, by the way, I started with eight. Here's my starting eight money that I've got. So I could easily afford this. And what does it do? Well, uh, basically, it provides goats for my large carnivores. Basically, for every um, security specialist I put to work at the goat pen, I pick a tile and get one point per large carnivore there. So this could come in handy. This could be a really good source of points. And I need, I need points uh, to win a multiplayer game or to do better in the solo game. And since I'm planning on doing a lot of carnivores, having a goat pen to feed them might be a good choice. So how about I have my second uh public action be to buy a goat pen. It's going to cost me uh, four bucks. So there's a five. I get one in change. And there's a little reminder down here that when you buy special buildings, you got to pay the money and you have to use one of your workers. I will use my last regular worker that does not give me any special benefits. Alrighty, so I've got a goat pen. Now where am I going to put it? I have to put it adjacent to an existing tile. And what the heck, I'm going to put it over here, not too far from the Spinosaurus, so that I can, um, you know, I mean, well, where you lay these tiles out is hugely important for when we actually get to the tour, because this little Jeep indicates what order I will activate tiles. And so I want to be careful about activating Like, I would want to activate, I mean, I'd want to get 
dinosaurs on the Spinosaurus pen before I ever activate the goat pen, so it'll actually generate points for me, for example. So maybe I want to put it out here, planning to get to it a little bit later, once I've filled this up, as an example. So let's say I'm going to put it out there. Okay. So that was my second action. I've still got plenty of workers. I could do a third. Oh, and by the way, this slides down, this slides down, a new one comes out, the resort, and now the resort is the one that's going to survive into round two. Right, uh, because you can see these little arrows that, you know, new things are always coming out. This is, this one, and all these are out. So, um, right, so my next action. Well, I could keep going. As long as I've got workers, I could build more buildings, I could um, you know, get more DNA, but the thing is, I need to save these workers for the second half of the round when I start doing private actions. I also need to save them for when I get to the uh, third round and I'm uh, actually giving a tour. So, am I, am I done? Let's see. Well, what I really need to be citing is, what am I going to develop first? The Velociraptor for the Raptor culinary experience? You know, a small carnivore? Well, again, one of my objectives. Or start working on the Spinosaurus. I mean, this is where the big points are. My first one's four points, next one's six, nine, and then nine. But they also bring more danger. But I'm planning on countering that danger with my security specialist and the fact that I'm going to get passive security upgrades throughout the game. So let's say because I already went out and got a bunch of DNA for the Spinosaurus, let's say I'm going to try to get at least one of these developed. Could I do, could I do two? I do have one purple. No, I can't. I can't get two of them done because to do two of them, I would need two blue and two orange. I only have one blue and one orange. Or I should say cayenne. Now, I could get some more. I could send one of my security experts to get some more DNA. And that would give me, uh, since I only sent one out, I'm only going to get one payout of this, one cayenne, and one orange. If I do that, now I think I've got enough to develop two Spinosaurus. Because I've got um, one purple, I've got the two blue and the two orange I need, I've got, I think I can do it. Yeah, so I'm done. I'm going to pass. I've still got workers. I could use them to build more buildings. I could use them to harvest more DNA, but I am going to stop. And if I were playing a multiplayer game, you might still have workers. You might still do more things. But eventually, everybody would pass, and we go from public actions, where it happens in turn order, to private actions, which everybody can do simultaneously. Because then you're going to put your workers to work in your own park. It's not a matter of first come, first serve, grabbing buildings and DNA you want. So, here's the deal. I am thinking that I would like to develop two uh, Spinosaurus, which means I'm going to have to put two of my employees to work over here in the Make Dinosaur section. So if I were to say, have my tour guide and my entrepreneur, and that's really wasteful. My, my, uh, my, um, my tour guide could help me upgrade my ability to give tours and give me more passive income to join the, the one I've already got there. My administrator could make me more money, and I'm going to need money to keep expanding. But, uh, you know, I, heck, who else am I going to have do it? I'm saving my security guys to help upgrade my security or to run the goat pen down here. Yeah, I might want to save one to run the goat pen. So, I'm going to put uh, these two workers to work making dinosaurs. And I could put up to three. I could make up to three dinosaurs, but I'm going to make two. And uh, so, let's get to it. I'm going to make them both spinosaurs. And the first one needs a red, a blue, a cayenne, an orange, and another blue. And just like that. Uh, my Jurassic World just got more dangerous. How much so? My danger level's increased by one. I have um, scored four points, though, which is pretty good. Yay. And then I put this here. So, so far, so good. My security level is meeting my danger level. But that's not going to last long, because then my second person is going to make another Spinosaur, um, which, again, is going to cost, what was it? A, another red and another blue. And my last cayenne, my last orange, and my purple. And now I've got two of them. Which increases my danger by two more, but it gives me six points. So now I'm up to ten. Things are looking good. Uh, these people, my tourists, are going to be very happy to get in here and come watch the dinosaurs at play. And now, 
I'm not done yet. I've still got workers. I'm going to save one of them for the tour so they can activate the goat pen. But in the meantime, I will have this last one um, double down on security because we got a couple of gigantic carnivores here. We need more security. And as you can see, like uh, all these actions, I could do one, two, or three. So I could actually increase my security level by two, but I'm having one of them work the goat pen. So I'm just going to have it increase by one. That means my security is increased by one. This would normally cost me one buck, but because I'm using a security expert to do it, I get a one buck discount. So it was basically free. Now, if I send this other one over here, it would cost me two bucks to go to the next level, and uh, I would get one of them for free, and then there'd be no danger. The increased, uh, my increased security would meet the needs. But uh, to heck with that, folks, my dinosaurs want goats to eat because I want points. So I'm going to go this way, which means it's going to hurt a little bit, but don't forget, I'm going to get some passive income as well. So I think it's all going to work out okay. So anyway, um, I have done one, two, three actions. And remember, I could be doing these actions at the same time as everybody else if you're playing multiplayer. These are, um, you know, making dinosaurs. You saw me do that twice. I increase my security once. What else can I do? I can increase the uh, range of my Jeep tours, uh, which gives me all kinds of bonuses. I can get um, um, uh, you know, venture capital funding, It'd make me more money, especially if I've got an administrator doing it. I could redefine, I could refine my DNA, which is a fun one. Anybody could do this, although if a scientist does it, they generate more DNA than normal. Anybody could do this to basically break down my big DNA into more regular DNA or combine regular DNA into the big DNA. And there's a nice handy dandy little cheat sheet for how things can be combined over here. So if I sent workers over here, I could be, the, the DNA I couldn't get from the dice, I could generate by splicing DNA and you know, re-crispering it together in other ways. So I could be doing any combination of those, but I think I'm done. And so I have finished my private actions. Other players might still be doing it, but when everybody's ready, we move on to our Jeep tour or our Jeeple tour. So at the beginning of the game, my Jeep can move up to two spaces. If I upgrade my tour ability, it can move three, four, or even five spaces so I can activate more and more stuff and get more passive income as well. But I did not upgrade that at all. Instead, I focused like a laser on getting these dinosaurs out. And we're gonna, now the people are gonna see them. I can move two steps. So I could come down here, but there's no reason to because I haven't put a Velociraptor in the Raptor culinary experience. So I wouldn't get any benefit. So my first drive is going to be over here. And people are going to flip their lids when they see the Spinosaur. Unless, of course, the Spinosaur eats them. Let's find out what happens. Uh, again, if I zoom in, there's a little reminder of how to resolve any of these tiles. They all say what they do. I'm going to go to my goat pen in a bit, but right now I'm here to the Spinosaur. And it says that because I've got two Spinosaur, that generates six total excitement. Uh, the more excitement I generate, the more money I make. I'm going to make five bucks at the end of this first round by generating all that excitement for the tourists. Okay, but there is a downside. In fact, there's actually a little uh, summary of how things work. When I visit a uh, Jeep location, you know, on my Jeep tour, the first thing I do is I uh, place any workers. Now, the, the paddock doesn't need workers. The, the paddock has the uh, dinosaurs. Maybe I should have some workers here to protect the people. That might, uh, bother, but anyway, so I don't have to spend any workers here. I do have to spend them when I get over here to the goat pen, so we'll do that in a minute. Now, I gain or lose excitement, depending on what tile it is. In this case, I got six excitement for my two, um, my Spinosaurus. Now, the people get bored really quick. Every time uh, my Jeep visits a location, the location gets more boring. If I visit this location next round, instead of getting six excitement, I'll only get five excitement. And the boredom level will go to two. The boredom level can keep climbing until uh, it goes up to five. So people will, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't think they'd get bored of dinosaurs, but they can do it. So anyway, so I got six excitement. It's getting a little bit more boring. So if I come here in the future, I won't get quite the same payday because people have already seen these dinosaurs. Now I actually do the action. And there is no action on um, this tile, but there is an action over here. There would have been an action over here, but there's no action on the paddock. Instead, the paddock just generates excitement. But 
If I'm visiting a paddock, I now have to do the danger roll. And um, this is the most dangerous place it could be because I have to roll the red danger die. The green danger die for herbivores is not too bad. There's only a one in three chance that anybody dies. Um, the small carnivores is a little bit worse. There is a 50-50 chance that somebody dies and only a one in six chance that it's two people. But going to a large carnivore, doesn't matter how many there are, there's again a 50-50 chance that somebody dies and it's a one in three chance that it's two people that die. So now, I'm going to hope that we get lucky and nobody dies, because there's still a 50 chance that everybody gets out okay. And everybody got out okay. That's a big uh, part of this game, folks, is randomness and hoping that you dodge a bullet, because no matter how much security you might have, it will not protect you from the visits to the paddocks. I got very, very lucky there. Well, 50 chance, it was bound to happen. Okay, so we finished, and I mark that that was my first drive. I put, I've got these two little arrows to indicate where I've gone. I went here. Now I'm gonna drive over to the goat pen. And I'm gonna put my last worker to work here. And it says, for each worker I put to work here, choose one unique tile and get a point for every large carnivore there. I'm gonna choose this one, I get two points. So actually I made 12 points on the first round. That's huge, that's really big, especially because I got lucky and nobody died. Um, you know, even better news. Okay, and if I'd had another security, I could have actually done it again. Anyway, no, so, um, although wait, I'm doing things out of order. First I put the workers there, then I get the excitement. The first time I bring anybody to the goat pin, the people are kind of excited. They'll give me a one, so I just jumped up one more on the excitement level. And remember, if I could get up to nine excitement by the end of the round, I'll have completed this objective. And I'll get five bonus points if I do it by the end of the second round. Man, maybe I should have waited. Maybe I shouldn't have done any of this because these areas are now both going to be less exciting in a future round. But what the heck, we'll, we'll go with it. So anyway, I got those two points. This is now less exciting. If I ever come back here again, I mean, I can still earn points for showing off the goats, how they're fed to the uh, dinosaurs. So that gives me points, but the excitement is waned. There's one minus one means no excitement. If I come here a third time, we actually lose excitement. People get more bored with the goats. But anyway, that's it. That was my second drive and I am done. Now other people, they might have had, um, you know, met upgraded so they could maybe drive for three or four or even five tiles. But as it is, I am now done with the Jeeple tour and nobody died. So congratulations to me. We now move on to the income and cleanup. First of all, we get income based on our excitement level. Hey, I got up that far. That is six bucks. So I'll be able to buy more stuff in round two. Nice. And uh, I look at my, if I had upgraded my Jeep ability, I might've put this here and I'd get a security and two bucks. As it is, I did not do that. I did not invest in tours. So I'm still down on the bottom level, but I do get one security and boom. Folks, it's like I planned it. I've got the safest uh, dinosaur world you've ever seen. My security meets my danger level. So hooray for me, thanks to that passive. Alrighty, so now I get one um, death on my hand for every level the danger is over security. Nobody died today. That's a good day in, giraffe, in uh, dinosaur world. Now we clean up the central boards, um, the dice that weren't grabbed, and you know, all the dice go back to the bag to set up for the next round. Right? Fine and dandy. Buildings that weren't built go away. It's a fixed number of buildings in a multiplayer game, but in the solo game, this says how many. In this case, it says, hey, the three oldest of each type go away. Which coincidentally, I mean, that's actually more that would have gone over here. There would have still been one of these, but they all went away. And so now we've got some new ones. Uh, Parasophilophilus paddock, the uh, brontosaur paddock, and uh, the ear, the the Irritator Paddock. Apparently there's a, a species of dinosaur called the Irritator. Then we've got um, the uh, DNA TM, a nice little you know informational kiosk about DNA. The Amber Extraction, a place where people can watch us working with DNA. And a Raptor Pen. Okay, so I've got the, oh, is that? Yeah, okay, so anyway. So those are the new buildings that come out over there. The dice come back. It's all summarized right here. Um, oh, we clean up the uh, public notice board, right, which is to say my excitement level comes all the way back down 
Um, we go on to round two, and if we were playing a multiplayer game, whoever has the fewest points would become the first in turn order. Now, I'm not playing a multiplayer. I'm always going to be the only player, so I don't have to worry about that. And, uh, and there's a special thing that happens at the end of round three where I have to kind of do some surgery and move my welcome center to become a park entrance, and it has to come someplace else. But that's not until round three. So, folks, we have just finished round one of, of the game, and that went pretty well. So far, nobody has died. And I haven't completed any objectives yet, but I'm on the way. I'm on the way. And uh, we're going to go to round two, where, first of all, I'm going to find out what new employees I get. Oh, by the way, uh, employees, they all go back to the supply. Because you use them or lose them, I use them all. So what do I want? Do I want two more security experts or one security expert and more, uh, what do you call it? Uh, scientists plus a tour operator that will help me upgrade my tours. The scientists will help me get more DNA. Um, do I want more DNA? Do I want to try to create more excitement? Do I want to, by the end of this round, get to nine excitement so that I can get five bonus points? That means I'd have to make two more. So if I'm going to try and make more, I should probably go for more um, scientists and fewer uh, administrators. Let's go for that one. That's going to be in my second. So I get two scientists, which means every time I use them, I get more DNA than normal, which I'm going to need to make my other two dinosaurs. Alrighty. So uh, then I get one tour operator. And again, no matter what card, you always get four regular employees. Okay, so that's it. And now we reveal the second card, which says, hey, um, I've got a problem, folks. I got a big problem. Uh, if we look a little bit more closely at the solo card, which I had to print out myself, um, first of all, it says, if I've got any dinosaurs, they're going to break out. Uh, or first of all, if I've already got dinosaurs that have broken out, then they would move to a different location. None have broken out. But I do have to. So I, I skipped because none there are broken out yet. This says, hey, can one of my dinosaurs break out to the north? No, they can't, because I haven't built anything there. So then I say, can they break out to the southeast? Yes, they can. This has broken out and is now rampaging in the goat pen. No surprise, they broke out, they want to go eat all the goats. So that has changed things up. And this is the big thing, folks. The dinosaurs in a multiplayer game never escape. But in a solo game, they come out here. Now, I put one of these to mark that, hey, there's somebody on the loose. I can still generate two more dinosaurs, but I've got to recover this dinosaur and get them back over here. It's just going to take me one worker. Any worker, if I drive them over here, well, basically, as long as there's a rampaging dino, I can't use the goat pen. I could still drive through it and whatnot, but the dino is just going to be focused on eating goats. But if I drive over here and use any one of my workers, then they can send them back to the pen. But my problem is, I will have already driven past here, so there won't be as many dinosaurs, there won't be as much excitement. Urgh! So that is a problem. And again, it's a problem I would only have in the solo mode. Now, it's possible on a future turn, if I don't return this dinosaur, then the dinosaur might um, rampage and move off to a different place and keep on blocking areas. So I do have to say, I love in the solo mode, you've got this extra wrinkle. It wouldn't really work well in a multiplayer game because it could very unfairly advantage one player over another because one player, hey, they all stayed set, stayed put for me, but for you, they're messing up all your plans. So it really adds a lot of fun Jurassic Park feel to have them break out and we got to go wrangle them and get them back home. Okay, so anyway, I've got this new problem. Uh, it says we're only going to have three dice to draft this turn. One, two, three. Okay, and that's a triple blue, a single red, or a single yellow. No advanced DNA. And if I want to make my last two, I need a purple. I, I need a purple, two, chi, th two, three cayenne, and two orange. None of those came up. Now I could generate my orange cayenne and purple by refining um, my DNA, turning my basic DNA into regular, into advanced DNA. Uh, but I don't think, I th you know, if I had gotten lucky and this had gone over this way, then maybe I could have gotten two more dinos, gotten the excitement level up enough to achieve this goal. But the dino said, nope, you are not achieving that goal in round two. Not today. Dinosaurs are a bit unpredictable. But anyway, what am I going to do? Well, I've got all these workers. I would still like to get the DNA to get these dinosaurs ready. And I'm thinking, well, hey, if I could get a Velociraptor over here, I could do a 1-2 and generate... Um, oh, what is it? What, what do you generate over here? 
Right. Oh, 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, if I could get this and both of these uh, you know, cloned, I could still pull it off. I mean, it's not like this is going to generate any excitement for me anyway, because it only generated one and then it lost me one. So coming over here wasn't that great. But I was really hoping that my dino would stay home and I'd be able to complete that. Now, I could still maybe do it another way. Because I've got all these people, I could invest in a completely different type of dinosaur. I could make an uh, irritator paddock, but where would I put it? One rule is you can't put paddocks next to other paddocks. So I'd have to put it up here, maybe. And remember, I can only drive two, so I could go one, but then I wouldn't be able to make it over here. So that's the problem. But if I were to build this and get a couple of these uh, cloned and upgrade the distance I could drive, then I could maybe go um, one, two, three, and see the Irritators and the Spinosaurus and get to the level nine excitement and complete that objective before the end of round two so I can get five points. This is a really nice system to emulate a multiplayer game because in a multiplayer game, there might be a, hey, get not level nine excitement and I'm racing against other players to do it. Now I'm racing against the uh, card itself. So what am I going to do next? Honestly, folks, I'm not quite sure, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a basic idea of Dinosaur World with the solo mode. And now if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.